it's probably not one lesson, it's lots of lessons, but I think it's, it's being a better listener, um, and that's, that's difficult. If you are in a leadership position in, in a corporation, uh, an awful lot of people patronize you. Sorry, it's the disease. And if that happens too much, you almost think that's real life. Uh, and you see that happening to a lot of people who were great, and then over time, life became a little bit easier. They focused down and down. That happened to me. And uh, I felt it was more important to get out and, and make those connections again. And, and that's where the real value uh, came. It's fascinating for me to, to, to watch others do this. And we are going through a, such a fundamental culture change in our society. This is around the world. And, and whether it, you know, the world is flat or uh, what's Dan Pink's uh, uh, recent Whole New Mind, uh, uh, lots of books. But I think they accurately describe this phenomenon that the average individual today has the power of yesterday's CEOs. They can get information that most people can't get. And the irony is the younger ones are better at getting it than the older ones. <laughs> so uh, that's an interesting, almost reversal in trend. But with it, it's brought a sort of an overconfidence on the part of a lot of those people uh, that they have rights and... and uh, not the responsibilities, uh, to lots of things, uh, and therefore don't have that work ethic or even the social ethic that's so necessary for our survival. I've given a, a number of talks along the lines of uh, big company innovation and other oxymorons. And I'm doing that because that's everybody's thinking that, so I might as well state it up front. How does a big company do that? Well, there there are lots of ways, and and John Chambers has you know been quite outspoken about that at at Cisco. And when you're in those roles, you you look at others to see what they are doing. And one of the things that I find is uh, keeping small product small projects rather small and sometimes even keeping big projects small as long as you can do it, and even separating the function of the small operation that is really trying to figure out what the right question is, even though you've already made a decision. You never stop asking that question because that's where the greatest innovation does come from. It's asking the question upside down. And Big companies have a lot of advantages. They have market power, they have reach, they have credibility. Uh, they tend to be stifled by bureaucracy. And Washington is, is giving us the wonderful opportunity to try to figure out new ways to beat even more bureaucracy. Uh, and sometimes that bureaucracy comes from the organization itself uh, that they really don't need. So it's a very, very difficult uh, challenge. But uh, the classic one is divide yourself not into silos, but into interconnected, uh, interconnected rather networks. Uh, I would argue that network science is going to be the most important field of the future. We're only scratching the surface on what's going to happen as we learn how to connect with people all over the world. And of course, not only how to connect people, but also treat cancer, because cancer is a network science problem. And we will learn, in fact, that is happening uh, at a number of institutions right now where there are potential breakthroughs based on that phenomenon. So I think we're going to learn a great deal, and it's going to be uh, you know, really exciting in terms of people who want to address needs of society generally and make money at it at the same time.